Welcome to Fresh Outlook, everyone. I'm Mia Toski. We welcome all of our viewers here in the U.S. and abroad. We hope you're having a great day. Now, we have a busy show for you. As always, we're going to take a look at the news here in the States and abroad, and we're going to begin with the mysterious disappearance of that Malaysian Airlines jet. Now, the question of what happened to the jetliner has remained one of the biggest mysteries in aviation history. Both industry experts and government officials from several countries still have no answers. The Prime Minister of Malaysia now confirms the missing jetliner was deliberately diverted and continued flying for more than six hours after losing contact. Here's more on that story. Vietnam says it is scaling down but not stopping its search for flight MH370 in the South China Sea. The nation has been asked to consider sending planes and ships to the Strait of Malacca. The Office of the Vietnam National Search and Rescue Committee switched from emergency search status to regular search status and moved the search to the eastern and southeastern paths of the suspected flight route. The statement follows remarks by a U.S. official that the Boeing 777 sent signals to a satellite for four hours after the aircraft went missing. Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 took off from Kuala Lumpur, carrying 239 people. It last made contact with ground control officials about 35,000 feet above the Gulf of Thailand between Malaysia and southern Vietnam before vanishing. 39 people were on board Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, and for all the families who are waiting, we are thinking of you. Now, to talk more about this mystery, we are joined by former White House aide Dee Dee Benke, Dr. Alexander Marescu from St. Peter's University, and also joining us for the first time is Dr. Alan Sanders, Associate Professor of Political Science, also from St. Peter's University, and via Skype from New York is Captain Tom Bunn, and we welcome you as well, uh, Mr. Bunn. Thank you. Well, we want to start off um, and t start talking about uh, exactly what's happened. We, we know that we're all speculating at this point, but obviously nothing like this has ever happened. And, and Captain, we want to start with you. Um, has anything ever happened like this in, in your memory ever in aviation history? No, nothing like this. This is completely unprecedented. What are and your theories? I mean, you're, you're a captain. You've uh, done a lot of time flying. What are your theories at this point? Well, the initial theory was that something had happened to the airplane rather suddenly. They uh, s were switched from one air traffic control center to a different one. And, and at that point, um, they were no longer seen on the radar. And they didn't make any radio transmissions. So the original theory was that something had happened very quickly in the plane, probably crashed at that point. As it turns out, that's not true. Um, with all the sophisticated equ equipment that we have in today's uh, modern technology world, why couldn't, can't we find the plane? Well, this is not something you expect to have happen um, except in a hijacking. And uh, the, the only reason we have any information at all is there was a system operating on the plane that apparently the hijacker didn't know was operating. And well, that was the engine reporting system that's, used, that's uh, connected to satellite. Well, Captain Bud, we're going to come back to you. Uh, we want to talk to the rest of our panel right now, and obviously we are all speculating right now. But, Dee Dee, we're going to ask you just uh, what your thoughts are. Amazing. I can't believe that this week, today, we're still talking about this, so we haven't found the plane. So it's such a human interest story. And so glad that the uh, American government, that we are stepping up and getting involved, because if it is terrorism, we need to know what happens. We can prevent something like this happening in the future. Or was it the pilot that, you know, took a dive because he wanted to commit suicide? I mean, what is it? You know, what happened? I mean, it's really amazing that it's on everyone's mind. It, it certainly is, and I would say not just here in the U.S., but around the world. Now, 227 of the passengers, two-thirds of them were Chinese. Uh, and, and you were talking uh, with me earlier before the show, Dr. Morescu. Do you think this could possibly be an, a, a terrorist attack on China? It's a very good question. Um, terrorist attacks against China. China is not a top target for global terrorists. Uh, typically, it's Western, Western targets. Um, but there are certainly many different restless regions within, within China. Um, and so at this point, really, until we can locate the plane and find some plausible reason why it disappeared, 
uh, certain theories have to remain on the table. But I, I would not say automatically that this is uh, all the indicator Absolutely. showing we're, a Chinese we're just attack. speculating. No, we, but we one of the other things that people sure. are saying is that they, if they had flown north, they could have gone near Kazakhstan or any of the other um, Islamic extremist nations. Right. And so that's another theory. That's another theory, and of course we don't know. Many of the regions, many of the countries um, around the flight uh, or the suspected flight of the, of the airplane are unstable regions, regions with all kinds of conflicts. So of course, since we believe now that the plane might have been hi hijacked, there's some concern about um, who and uh, which kind of um, uh, people might want to do that. The one thing I do want to point out, however, is that although we don't know and uh, there's the possibility of terrorism and hijacking, the good news here is when you take a look at all of the countries that border this area, there's been an immense amount of international cooperation. And that's something we sort of overlook because we're always looking for the, um, the bad news in, in the situation. Here's some good news. A whole bunch of countries, including the United States, the regional powers there, other countries, have been involved in the search effort, and I think that's good news. Uh, we all care about these people, and I think uh, that's a comfort to the that's relatives. A, that's, a, that's a great point. Um, one of the questions, I guess, anytime you see, well, we've never seen anything like this, but this obviously raises the question about security. Um, what issues does this raise? Um, I want to weigh in with everybody on this, and also, uh, Captain Bunn, I want to ask you, what issues uh, do you now have uh, concerning security? I don't, I don't think this has really changed, uh, the question about security. There's certain limits about what people will tolerate when they go through security. Um, L L, of course, has um, more risk probably than any other airline, and they have much more stringent security, but I don't think in most countries we would put up with that kind of um, elevated security uh, uh, well, inspections. Just the fact that a plane goes missing, though, um, I mean, obviously, it, that's maybe my, the question that I wanted to address. The fact that a plane is able to go missing, I'm just surprised by that. I don't know if well, anybody else it has to be an is. inside job. I mean, there's no way that there were people that were disgruntled or some passenger that just charged, you know, the, 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 the cockpit. This had to be an inside job because, you know, all the experts are talking about you had to go one step, two step, three steps. And as our pilot, you know, as the guest said that, uh, you know, they missed something. But for the most part, they got away with it. I mean, for now. And they're well, looking, of course, at the Austrian and Italian passports um, and obviously the pilot and the co-pilot. Right. I mean, to know exactly what went wrong, we'll need to uh, backtrack and see what actually happened. However, we do know of one thing that happened, and that is some people with false passports got on the plane. And you would think that today, in the computer age, uh, there would be a, a worldwide system that would be able to track that. But there isn't, and other countries are very lax. We're not in the United States, but in other countries are very lax about passports. But so there are some international standards on, on passports, and an increasing number of nations are using biometric information uh, integrated into their passports. Nevertheless, uh, one of the biggest businesses in Southeast Asian countries is punting off uh, stolen passports. Right. It is, uh, I don't think, no, this is not counterfeiting. These are stolen passports that are still valid. Maybe some are counterfeited, but it's increasingly difficult to counterfeit uh, passports. These were stolen passports that were still live. They were still active. Are you saying they didn't match the, the people? They couldn't tell? Well, that, that is probably the security element, is that they people... Are they were paid off or something like that? Paid off, or there are many different ways of corruption that can take place, but people can maybe change their hair color a little bit. Or, But in any case, uh, these there is a very vibrant business uh, in Southeast Asia for passport control. Uh, mm. Well, don't, don't you find it somewhat um, odd that there have been no demands if it was hijacked? Yeah, I think it's just an inside deal. It has to be. How could it not be? Well, of course, we don't know where the plane is. And so um, if the worst is, has happened and the plane has crashed, there may not be any demands. Um, we don't know. If the plan has safely landed, and we sincerely hope that the plane has sincerely yeah. landed, sometimes terrorists don't give you the demands for a long time. Or they may have given the demands, and some governments may not be willing to let well, us know course, about that. Well, of course, China is demanding answers from Malaysia yes. right now, yes. and being pretty stern about that, because again, two-thirds of the passengers were Chinese. So, um, but they are looking at the backgrounds right now. Uh, both of these pilots, uh, the, pilot who, uh, the pilot was 53 years old and flying for decades. Um, very respectable family man, and the uh, other pilot, the co-pilot, was 27 years old and about to be married. And again, everybody ha only had wonderful things to say about them. But you so. never know, though. That's the thing. These things happen where people snap or there's something in the background, so they're going to do the research. But who knows? They could have had some catastrophic, terrible thing happen the night before. You don't know. 
And let's uh, weigh in with our, our captain as well. And, and Captain, I understand that you have written a book, and a lot of times when you, we see things like this, it's for some reason that a plane crash just cuts to the core of everybody's soul. And a lot of people are afraid to fly after incidents, whether it's a crash or something unknown like this. Yes, I, I've been working with people who are afraid of flying for some time and realizing it's not just a question of understanding that, that flying is very safe. There's also emotional issues. And so I've recently done a book, it's called SOAR, the uh, a breakthrough treatment for fear of flying because it's a very advanced way of dealing with it. But I'd, I'd like to address the inside job idea. There's certainly a lot of people who know the aircraft systems and any hijacker who uh, could be trained to, to know what the 777 systems are. Now, one thing that makes me believe that it was not the captain or co-pilot is that there are reports that the plane climbed to 45,000 feet. Yeah. It could be only done if both the captain and co-pilot agreed to do it. Why would they go to 45,000 feet? Because if they went to 45,000 feet and then quickly depressurized the airplane, everyone on board who was not on oxygen would no longer be functional after 15 seconds because of the thin air. The co-pilot and the captain could put on their oxygen masks. The hijacker could be then uh, uh, incapacitated. And that, I think, might have been, uh, there's no other reason for the strategy of going to 45,000 feet because that's not a normal altitude. So then what is your theory? I think it was a hijacking, and I think they attempted to uh, incapacitate the hijacker. What happened that didn't work, uh, or uh, we don't know. Well, we have a feeling we're going to be talking about this next week as well because this is a, we hope that they find the plane at least this week. And of course, this wasn't the only incident. We also had a, a U.S. Airways flight in Philadelphia that had a blown tire. And that also stirs, again, again something like airplane crashes uh, is like the number one fear uh, in people. So um, certainly, hopefully, there's not a, any uh, more incidents this week. But um, any other last thoughts on this, uh, on this horrible disappearance? Yeah, well, I guess another silver lining can be that hopefully this will uh, up um, standards of safety. Uh, and again, I think it's good that the American, uh, Americans are very involved in trying to help find out what happened. And, uh, you know, hopefully it's not terrorism, but it very well could be. And again, I think uh, focusing on the good out of this, that the, mm -hmm. the countries are all cooperating. I, I certainly like that, Doctor. Um, any other last thoughts? I would just say, uh, yeah, let's hope that this has all been some grand mistake. I almost wish in an odd way that it was a hijacking and they've landed the plane somewhere and that the people are still alive and that it hasn't been uh, uh, some sort of midair uh, problem or that they landed in the sea, uh, just for the families and the survivors. Uh, Absolutely. They get some, and like, certainly hope get for some, some answers for the families. Indeed. And uh, staying on the, on the nice aspects or the better aspects of this episode. Let's hope that the countries continue to cooperate mm -hmm. and that, of course, once we do find what happened to the plane, uh, that the countries continue to cooperate in uh, helping the victims, if any of them are alive, and, of course, in helping the relatives uh, cope with this problem. I think international cooperation should be the utmost, uh, of the, the utmost importance here, and I hope it continues. We're going to have more international news in just a moment, and we want to thank the captain also in New York City. Thanks so much for being on the show. Thank and don't go away, everyone. When we come back, we will be talking international politics from the Ukraine, Turkey, and Venezuela. We'll be right back. <laughs>